Samantha Edwards. So far, we have not been able to have any information. Now, the affidavit was released. I've had it in my hands for less than 10 minutes. There are a few things I want to point out that are piecing together what led up to Nicole Cable's kidnapping and eventual murder. That's right. The town manager and town council were really hoping that they wouldn't have to go through this again because what it boils down to is Millinock is essentially broke. It was during the Patrick Armstrong case where the state saw a flaw in the way it handled juvenile offenders. What they wanted was for Patrick to serve a blended or bind over sentence, which simply means allowing him to serve the first part of a sentence in a juvenile facility like this one before entering an adult prison. The life of a migrant worker is not easy. They spend most of the year going from town to town and hoping for a good crop and a good season because the better the crop, the more money that they can make. Now it's stressful and it's tiresome for their families and for most of them, it's the only work they've ever known. This morning, this lot was completely empty and it took seven workers four hours to take 25 boats out of the water. And now, as you can see, they're stacked double wide and the workers tell me they'll keep doing it until there's no room left. Through the use of taxpayers' money and contractors working around the clock, the city of Patton has been able to improve most of the roads that have been washed away but it could take up until fall for the city to fully recover. Samantha, for a town this size, $45,000 is no small amount of money. That's right, Chris. The town of Wesley has 114 residents, and at Monday night's annual meeting, they were told a number, $44,721. That's the amount of money missing from the town's funds. Now, the auditor hired by the town tells me it was a combination of property taxes and excise taxes that never made it into the town's bank account. Most of the money went missing during the 2011-2012 tax season. Since then, the town's former tax collector has stepped down, the most recent year balanced. But some residents of this quiet town are left with questions and demanding answers. Wesley is the type of town where everyone knows each other and for the most part knows what's going on, which is why some were surprised by Article 6 in the town's warrant, nearly $45,000 in missing funds. The accounting records for the town of Wesley indicate that uh, the money was collected, but it was never put into the bank, so it was never deposited. People wanted to know where the money went to. That's a, a, quite a substantial amount of money for a small town like Wesley. And um, they want to get to the, to the bottom of it and find out where, where our money went to. Resident Tina Ross says they didn't even know the money was missing until they received the town's warrant for the meeting. But she says the selectmen did. It's huge. It's a, it's a huge, um, I can't even uh, uh, imagine it. You know, being, a, uh, being uh, running the town and this just coming to, to the surface. I think it should have been done immediately. I don't think that they should have waited a year. James Wadman was hired as the town's auditor this past year. He also says town officials knew about the missing money. In a previous audit by another firm last year uncovered 39000 in missing money. He found nearly 6000 more, bringing the total to nearly 45000 Wadman was ready to dig deeper, but Tina Ross said selectmen expressed concern at the town meeting. And they wanted us to uh, vote to just forget about it and and continue on. But that was clearly not what the townspeople had in mind. You know, the discussion went on for approximately an hour and and I could tell probably five minutes in that, you know, the, the town justifiably is not satisfied with where things are right now and they would like some answers regarding this. I mean, that's it's not like losing $20, a $20 bill out of your pocket. And you go, where did the $20 bill go? That's $45,000. There's a trail there, and I think as a taxpayer and a business owner and everything, that we deserve some answers. The town did vote in favor of Article 6 to investigate the situation. We did try contacting the selectmen, but they were unavailable for comment. The Washington County Sheriff's Office did confirm that they are investigating the missing money. And Chris, this is something that we'll just have to keep following and update our viewers as it comes out. It all started with this flyer that says Nicole was last seen with a man she met on Facebook named Brian Butterfield. Now since then that account has been deleted, but one local young man whose name is Brian Butterfield says he needs to clear his name and he had nothing to do with it. I was sitting on my couch and watching TV and Penobscot County Sheriff shows up at my door and he was looking for Nicole and I went upstairs and told my mom because her name's Nicole and I told him that Nicole was at my house but it really it was my mom. 
Butterfield says he knew Nicole from school, but only spoke with her a couple times. I had forgotten about her. I hadn't even remembered her until they said her name to me. And he took my phone and my Facebook, my emails. Um, I even let him search my house and I um, gave the consent to search my phone and dump all the information on it. But Butterfield says he knew about the fake Facebook account in his name and had previously gone to police and Facebook security before Nicole Cable ever went missing. I got a message from one of my friends to my girlfriend saying that, you know, I was commenting on other girls' pictures and asking other underage girls to hang out and I'm 19. And I was asking them for pictures that I shouldn't have been. According to Butterfield, neither the police nor Facebook did anything about it. I was surprised and upset because I told the police about it. I feel like it could have been prevented. Like, there was no reason that they couldn't have done anything for me. I, I went into the police station and talked to them, and I called them twice. Butterfield says ever since news of Nicole's disappearance and the mention of his name on the flyers and in the media, both he and his family are feeling the backlash as people assume he is involved. My mom's taking a heart and my um, whole family, a lot of people are talking to them about it and asking them if it's me and it's just crazy right now. It's not, it's not good for me or my family. I want people to know that I just didn't do it, that the sheriff's office cleared me. Like, I'm not involved with this anymore. Like, I'll cooperate all I can. If they want to talk to me more, you know what, they can come and get me. They know where I live. I just want her to be found and brought home safe and sound. And forever who's doing this to be caught and brought to justice. Now, we did speak with Sheriff Glenn Ross with Penobscot County, who said they were aware of the theory of, of this man that she met on Facebook named Brian Butterfield. Now they have investigated and questioned this Brian Butterfield and at this time he is not a suspect but again it is an ongoing investigation. Seven workers lost their jobs in Maine, 47 of them living in Brownville or neighboring Milo. These families will need to find some other way to survive and provide. And they're not the only ones. The local economy depends on the rails. And now the eerie silence leaves some worried. It's, it's strange to have the eerie silence of Brownville these days. Abandoned tracks, no ding from the signals, the soundtrack of Brownville is gone. There's no locomotives here. Um, it is just barren. I've never been able to look across the junction. Usually this is full of trains and cars with product being shipped all over. The bustle of Brownville Junction has all but disappeared after a disaster that happened 160 miles away. When I saw the disaster in Lake Megantic, it I didn't really put two and two together, but when I heard MMA's name mentioned, um, that started me thinking. 47 workers living in the Brownville area now facing unemployment. We're just losing a part of the town here. Usually the hub of rail transportation, Brownville has come to a halt. It is the lifeblood of this town. Every small business that's left here in town relies on income of the rail workers. You know, you gotta tighten your belt, do what you can do, you get your bills to pay, you gotta feed the kids, you gotta feed the family. Steve Johnson at the local general store feels the effects of the layoffs and the loss of morale. It's just, you're in a big lull. Like, you know, you're waiting for things to happen, that, uh, what, you're waiting for word to come down to see what's gonna happen. Word that isn't coming, just like the trains that don't come through. You do, you do miss it. 
it's awful quiet. It's kind of like, I don't know, everybody just, it's like a ghost town. But they aren't ready to give up yet. It just makes you stronger. That's all it does. It just makes you stronger. And, and I know it'll come back. I know it will. It's uh, just a matter of time. But that's only the beginning for this quiet town. According to the town manager, the laid off workers will receive $617 every two weeks. Now the average family consists of four to six people and unemployment only lasts 130 days. Given the drastic cut to income, many families will be unable to pay for MMA's insurance premium. And Mike, this is just the tip of the iceberg and something that we'll just have to keep following through, but definitely not an easy situation.